I did not believe him. I went to my mother's room and crawled up on the bed beside her. She was staring at the ceiling. Let me hold it, she said. Hold what? The baby, she said. Her voice was odd and silly. My father came in and she asked for him for him for the baby. He leaned down and said, I, I wish, I, I wish. The baby, she said. It didn't make it, he said. I'll hold the baby, she said. It didn't make it, he repeated. It can't be dead, she said in the same sing-song voice. It was just alive, just a minute ago. I slept beside her until I heard her calling my father. When he turned on the light, I saw the blood spread out all across the bed. It had soaked the sheets and the blankets. It had soaked into the white plaster of my cast. An ambulance came and took her and my father away. Graham and Gramps came to stay with me. Graham took all the sheets and boiled them. She scrubbed the blood from my cast as best she could, but a dark pink stain remained. My father came home from the hospital briefly the next day. We should name the baby anyway, he said. Do you have any suggestions? The name came from me and from came to me from the air. Tulip, I said. Let's name her Tulip. My father smiled. Your mother will like that. We'll bury the baby in the little cemetery near the Aspen Grove, where the tulips come up every spring. My mother had two operations in the next two days. She wouldn't stop bleeding. Later, she said, they took out all my equipment. My mother would not have any more babies. I sat on the edge of a gorge in the Badlands, looking back at Graham and Gramps and the pregnant woman on the blanket. I pretended for just a moment that it was my mother sitting there and she would still have the baby and everything would be the way it was supposed to be. And then I tried to imagine my mother sitting here on her trip out to Lewiston, Idaho. Did all the people on the bus get out and walk around with her, or did she sit by herself like I was doing? Did she sit right here in the same spot? Did she see the exact pink spire? Was she still thinking about me? I picked up a flat stone and sailed it across the gorge where it had hit the far wall and plummeted down, down, careening off the jagged outcroppings. My mother once told me that the Blackfoot story of Nappy, the old man who created men and women, the to decide if these new people should live or forever or die. Nappy selected a piece of bark and said that he would drop it in the river, and if it floated, people would live forever. If it sank, they would die. The bark floated. A woman said, "Try it with a stone. If the stone floats, we will live forever." If it sinks, we will die. Nappy dropped the stone into the water. It sank. People die. Why did Nappy stick with the bark? I asked. Why didn't he listen to the woman? My mother shrugged. If you had been there, you could have made the rock float, she said. She was referring to my habit of skipping stones across the water. I picked up another rock and sailed it across the gorge, and this one, too, hit the opposite wall and fell down and down and down. It was not a river. It was a hole. What did I expect?